Hey everyone, welcome back to Raising Unicorns by Harmon Brothers. And in today's episode, we share our video ad strategy in a day. Learn how we research and test your ad messaging to death to make sure they sell. Unicorns are real. In the past eight years, Harmon Brothers has helped raise five unicorns. Yes, that's five companies with a billion dollar valuation, with at least six more companies right on the cusp of becoming unicorns. Here on Raising Unicorns, we share the lessons we've learned to help you grow your business by tens or even hundreds of millions of dollars. It's time to start raising a unicorn of your own. All right, guys, welcome to the podcast episode today. I am Shane Rickard. I am the Chief Creative Officer at Harmon Brothers. I am joined today by Britt Ellsworth, who is one of our video strategists for the company. Hey, Britt, how's it going? Hey, good. How are you? Good, good. And... We'll, what are we going to talk about today, Britt? Let's get into this. Okay, so today we're going to talk about video strategy in a day. And this is actually something that our listeners can go download for free. I'm super, super excited. It's been a long time coming. A lot of hands have worked on this. But what we want to do today is kind of give a plan for strategizing your entire video funnel in one day. It's pretty comprehensive, so buckle your seatbelts. But my biggest question before we get started, Shane, is why is video so hard? Like, I know a lot of companies really struggle with what to do for video, how to do it, all that kind of stuff. But I know that you've been deep in video for over a decade now. And I just want to get like from your perspective, what makes it so flipping hard? Yeah, for sure. Definitely had lots of ups and downs and utilizing video in marketing throughout my years in the marketing world and advertising world. And I think one of the things that makes it so hard is video is so open ended in, in the sense of like, you know, with copywriting, you've got clever copy that either sells or doesn't. And it's like, that's the end of your list of variables of like what you have to you know factor in with even with like still imagery, it's just like you pick a picture and then you put some copy next to it and that's it. And with video, there's so many more things. It's like, what are you going to show? How are you going to like capture the brand and how will it evolve? Because it's always a moving image. There's a lot that like goes into it. And I think there's just an infinite amount of choices that you can make. And depending on those choices of what you put in front of the audience and how you sequence it and what you say and how you say it can make a huge impact when all those different variables on play all at the same time. And I've been on a lot of campaigns where I've been lucky enough to do it right. And I've been also on a bunch where we've done it wrong and learned a lot in that process that I've, I feel like has helped me, you know, figure out what works and what doesn't in, in some ways to make it more effective. And I think that's why it's so challenging is because you have an infinite array of possibilities and people often get, I think, lost in their choices and they get off talking to the wrong audience or maybe even like getting distracted from the actual purpose of the video because you can just go in so many different directions, you know, with your video and what, who you're talking to. Yeah, I think you're spot on. It's kind of like an open-ended assignment and it's like, I don't even know where to start. I think we're kind of programmed to have like one right way and that one right way mentality does not jive with video. Even though there's not necessarily one right way, there are a lot of ways to do it wrong, right? I think that's part of the equation too. So one other thing that I have noticed is that it's super, super easy for companies to make assumptions about what kind of videos to make. And what I mean by that is they take what they know and they just say, okay, we're doing that. And that may not necessarily be exactly what your customer needs to hear at that stage of the funnel, you know, wherever they are. And so I think video strategy in a day is really helpful in that it gives you like guardrails, but it doesn't like keep your thinking super small. It's like work within these boundaries, but like do anything. And that's a like a creative concept, right, that you guys use in Harmon Brothers, where when you're creating video for clients, you do use guardrails, right? Yeah, for sure. I mean, we have kind of some proven like ways that we write. We have some proven structure things that I think that we try and adhere to as long as they work against the objective that the client's asking us to accomplish with that video content. But how you accomplish that, as long as it's working against those objectives, can be wildly different in terms of what type of concept you're going with or what that video looks like. It's definitely like things that we have like guardrails of guiding what we want to get out of the piece of content. But then like the creative possibilities can be hugely varied and very wide. So the other two points I just want to make sure that we convey here, the reason that video strategy in a day is like a concise 
plan that you can do in one day is because over the iterative process of putting together video, it can be really easy for things to fall through the cracks, like for you to miss an entire way of selling your, you know, angle of selling your product or audience that you want to address. And you can go down a lot of rabbit holes and miss out on like making a plan for every part of it. So I wanted it to be just like a cohesive, like single day kind of thing. Although the plan takes more than a day, the strategy really happens in, obviously, it's actually less than a day. It's like you could probably put this together in a couple of hours. But there's also the need to test into messages. And I know that we at Harmon Brothers have really leaned into testing into messages before we make big videos. Do you have any thoughts there, Shane? Yeah, for sure. I mean, like as far as how myself and many of the creatives at Harmon Brothers approach this, we always try and make our best assumptions we possibly can with doing research into the product, talking to the client themselves who does the product intimately, as well as looking at customer reviews and in many cases actually interviewing real customers of the product that we kind of start like formulating what we think would be the messaging. And oftentimes that gets us in the right ballpark, but it's still a wide range of avenues that we can kind of chase after in terms of what types of messaging will work and resonate with our different audiences for a given product. And we've started to really lean into being okay with like, oh, we've got like four or five or seven or eight like really good messages. We're not sure which one is the right message. They all kind of feel like they could work because then it's like, okay, let's go test all these different messages against each other and see which one works and for what audiences because that can help really create a really clear path of what's your best bet and get your best bang for your buck out of the video ads that you then will go create based on those findings you got out of the message testing. So I think, you know, it's a huge part of our process and something we we highly value in the creative and helps us really, you know, juice the most we can out of the creative for our clients. I love that we come into video with data, like actual data, not just, well, the client thinks this about their product. Like I hear that a lot. And I love that we test into things because we can come back and say, no, we know that this works. We've gotten sales from it. This is the message that we really need to lean into. So as far as testing, so there's a large portion of video strategy in a day is devoted to how to test and what to test. And there's different tests that you perform at different levels of the funnel, which different levels of the funnel we'll go into in just a minute. But we really want to be data backed in our video strategy, right? We don't want to assume things, even though we are pulling our messages from real users, people who have reviewed the product, people who are talking about the product, is still a leap to assume that those users is a good representation of what people really need to buy. And so what we want to do is we want to make sure we test into putting messages in front of people who have not bought and figure out which of those messages get people to buy. And so a lot of video strategy in a day is is dedicated to testing into the messages at every level of the funnel. So what I would like to do now is talk about the different levels of the funnel and how we speak to different levels of the funnel differently. And I know levels of the funnel, that's a little bit nebulous, like lots of people talk about it in different ways. What I'm specifically talking about here is Eugene Schwartz's breakthrough advertising levels of awareness. So Shane, do you want to like talk about a little bit about what people who are problem aware are feeling and thinking and going through in this awareness level funnel thing. Sure, yeah. And you can correct me if I screw a thing up here, Brett. So yeah, like with the problem aware people, this is an audience that is purely just focused on this problem that they have. They know that there's a pain point in their life that is bothersome or cumbersome to them that they're acutely aware of that is something that is on the forefront of their mind, but not necessarily something that they're maybe even aware that there's something out there to fix this. And and you're going to talk about that a little bit in a second with the solution aware, but it's mostly just people who are acutely aware of a problem that they have. And that's the extent of their awareness. Yeah, exactly. And so the next step down would be solution aware, right? So these people, they have this problem, they're feeling this pain, and then they start to go figure out, okay, what are the solutions to this problem out there? And they start to understand. And this is where we get into Not only your solution and your competitors, right, but also other options in the market. You know, like, for example, you know, someone is feeling maybe a bit frumpy, maybe they'd like to be a little bit more attractive. 
And so they start to look for solutions in the market and they see, okay, well, I could get, you know, a stationary bike to put in my house, right? Instead of a stationary bike, I could get a treadmill, right? Or I could go into a differing category, but that solves the same problem, which is like, go get a gym membership or go get a personal trainer, right? And so that's not like necessarily your direct competitors, but it is competing for those same dollars. So that's kind of the solution aware crowd is they're looking at what's out there that solves this problem. And the next level would be product aware. What are product aware people aware of? Yeah, I think that the best way that I can explain product aware people are, it's just an audience of people who are aware of both the problem that they have, the solution they have, as well as like the individual products. What I would say, you can correct me, Britt, if I'm wrong, but like the products in a particular category. So it's like, okay, you can have a stationary bike and you've got Peloton and you've got an order track as different options within that product category that they're aware of. And they're kind of evaluating the different choices at that point between those two products that are very similar. Exactly. So they're looking at things like what are the features, right? What do I get when I purchase a Peloton bike versus an order track bike? What are the price points, right? Do I get free delivery with one versus the other? And, you know, they're kind of weighing it out. This is very cerebral work. We're just looking at facts here, like which one is better? At this point, it's kind of less emotional unless you hit them right. Because when they're comparing products, it's really a very rational decision at that point. So in Video Strategy in a Day, we talk a lot about what videos you should be using throughout your funnel. And so we really lean into these levels of awareness to inform what type of videos to use. So for the problem aware crowd, we really lean into value prop videos, right? Like value props as in... This value prop, like this feature or this benefit of our product solves this problem, you know? And so it, we lead with the problem, obviously, and we solve it through this mechanism. And so the top of the funnel is really kind of like value prop problem kind of ads. And we can go into the parts of a video a little bit later. But and then when we talk about the solution aware crowd, we're really leaning into stories like either UGC or, you know, getting video of users, like even your employees, like people who are close to the product, who have emotional stories to talk about regarding the product. We have run ads or we've made ads for some pretty emotional products. You know, I mean, Lumi was extremely emotional, right? I mean, it's not just a deodorant. It's a way to feel confident, right? Yeah, I mean, we've done some like origin story videos for a couple of companies where we had a, it was a company called Haven Lock. It's a kind of lock that goes to the bottom of your door that is because a deadbolt can be kicked in really quick. It's like a four or five kicks is the average deadbolt can be broken. And so it's an additional layer of protection at the base of your door. And we we interviewed a gentleman and created an ad where he had actually had a guy who had a Glock in his hand actually try and kick in his front door. And he gave up and actually he's going to break into the house and rob the family, all of which were home and sleeping in their beds. And he, you know, tried, failed. The device stopped him from going in. He actually broke into his neighbor's house and ending in a firefight. Luckily, everybody was okay. But it was a really good visual like story of like this you know, product really solving this problem that they had, like this fear they had. And it was a very effective ad for the company for a time. Totally. Oh, my gosh, that's intense. I know we also had an ad for a conception product, her experience with infertility and how painful that was. And that story was super, super powerful. So this level of the funnel is where we really tap into the emotions of emotional angles of each person's story that we can kind of get a hold of. And then when customers are really kind of comparing products at the bottom of the funnel, we're really focusing on the offer that we're putting in front of them, you know, I think there's it's really easy to make the assumption that you should just put your product out there and that's the offer and that's the only thing you can offer. And there's only one way to do it, but that's just absolutely not true. It doesn't matter what your product is. You know, you can change your offer through your price, but you can also change your offer through the things that you highlight, your risk reversal guarantee, you can change your offer Indeed. through bundling products, you can change your offer. Like there are many ways to change your offer. And so instead of assuming, okay, this is my product and this is what I have for sale and that's my offer, 
we test into ads and individual offers on the landing page of, you know, how can we package this product to be most appealing and get the most sales? So it's actually kind of exciting to think about the, all the possibilities and to think that the possibilities open up when you start thinking in this bigger way of, okay, it's not as straightforward as, you know, you kind of assume going into it. Yeah, for sure. That one has like a lot of different variables. And I think it's very product dependent on like how you want to advertise. And there's a lot of different play in that area, depending on what type of features you can tout, what type of like offer you can actually get into in terms of pricing, in terms of promotion. And every company's and product is going to be a little bit different in terms of like what you can offer and as far as margin and what still makes sense. But that one has a lot of different variability. And that one, I think, in my experience, that level is the one where there's the most I would say frequency of like trading them out because you're testing lots of different things for different seasonal like sales or different areas like that for promotional pricing. And that one also has a lot of like movement on that on that side as far as what you can actually influence really quickly when they're at that decision point. Absolutely. So the last thing I want to go into is what is the plan of video strategy in a day? So we'll talk about the parts of a video, and I'd really like you to focus on that because you're so much closer to video than I am. And then I will talk about the flow of the plan for each level of the funnel and then let people know where they can get this free resource, okay? So, I mean, on the most fundamental basic level of how we approach video, we have a, of a, we have a couple of key components that we look at here at Harm Brothers. It's kind of outlined in this video strategy in a day that are, are the building blocks of every video. And one of those things is first is obviously the hook, which is usually just that first couple of seconds of the video. We've, we've talked to a couple of Facebook data scientists recently that, that estimated that the evaluation point, the time that it takes for someone to decide whether content is relevant to them is getting shorter and shorter. And it's now on Facebook, they measure it in less than half a second. It's four tenths of a second that they decide whether this content is relevant to them or not and move on, which is crazy fast. So hook is super, super important. What those opening visuals are critical to actually getting people who are just shotgunning through stuff so fast on content to get them to actually pay attention. So the hook is a huge one. The problem section is really spelling out what the pain that the customer should be relating to. They should be watching that problem section and really saying like, oh, I resonate with this because I felt this exact same pain or I know exactly what they're talking about because I've gone through that myself. And then the solution section is obviously where we're introducing our product. It doesn't necessarily have to be the first time we introduce a product. I like to try and get the hook to be integrated with the product if we can. But it's also like where we really showcase this the solution in the form of the product and how it's a really ideal and optimal solution for their problem and really alleviates their pains and gives them, you know, whatever that really a long-term benefit is whether it's time back in their day or whether it's, you know, more money in their pocket or easier like comfort in life. And then obviously the last part that's a really big part is just call to action. I mean, that's a key component of good marketing is just asking the customer to take action and purchase and or do something, fill out a form, you know, sign up for an email on uh, for an email list, whatever your call to action is, give them a direct one where it actually says to direct them to do something and take action at that moment. Yes, totally. Love it. That's exactly right. And it's important to have at least these sections in your video for each level of the funnel because it's like you want to make sure. Well, first of all, the hook is indispensable. Like you said, like people have to know that it's relevant to them. And that is absolutely part of the hook. It's capturing attention and making it relevant in 0.4 seconds, right? Then the problem and solution, I mean, that's your product. And then talking about the CTA, right? The call to action is like you can't just assume that they know what to do. They don't know what to do. So tell them exactly what to do. It's super simple. And we love at Harmon Brothers to make our CTAs super funny. You don't have to do that, but that goodwill that carries over to the click is, we've found it to be very helpful in getting the sales. And then as far as the video strategy and the day plan, so for each level of the funnel, and we go with super in-depth in this free resource. It's like a 20-minute video. It's really not like a big commitment, but there it is absolutely chock full of, I mean, it is dense. But for every level, 
for a problem aware, solution aware, product aware, we're doing research, right? Like research is the foundation of understanding your market and understanding what they need. And then we ideate. We really take that research and we kind of go to the drawing board. Like, how can we get this message across? How can we be creative and get this message across in a clear and compelling way? Then we go into testing. We take those ideas. We, you know, we try and be scrappy and put together videos, either images or videos that we can test very quickly. And we go ahead and do that testing. So we're getting real data to inform the next step, which is building those videos. So taking that information we learned from those tests, writing new videos and making those videos and then launching like then you are ready to move on to the next level of your funnel. And when you put it all together, you end up with a top of funnel, a middle of funnel and a bottom of funnel set of videos that they kind of happen. If you follow the plan, you're not missing anything. And that's pretty exciting, I think, from a brand owner's perspective, because it always feels like we're always a step behind where we want to be. But if you just follow this plan, you can kind of put your head down and just do it. And then you're the full funnel problem is solved. Yeah, and I think it's interesting because, I mean, part of what our, I mean, obviously, Harm Brothers is known for like, oh, you guys make these really like amazing, insane videos that are just like wacky and like just like huge concepts and funny and, you know, cool visuals, which is part of the process. But I mean, a lot of the process that people don't see behind the scenes is like we're looking at their funnel and like their actual like mix of advertising of what they're running and how they're doing it and helping them see what we would say a leaky funnel where they're losing people or where they're not capitalizing on an audience that might be halfway through the sale and might be problem aware and solution aware, but they don't like, they're not getting those people from that solution aware into that last category and into the purchase. And so a lot of that is fighting this battle to help them create content that will fix some of those areas and identifying those areas. And so, like you said, Britt, this is kind of a holistic approach where if you go through this systematically, kind of knowing that, yes, it's going to be kind of long hauled and it has a lot of things to do, but like this is covering your bases and like doing what we are trying to achieve for all of our clients was just have content for each piece of the funnel, each different layer, having the right messaging that's nailed down. Because that's really the dream. Because whenever we've seen that buttoned up and really trued up, performance follows, you know, sales follow. If you've got a good product and those other things are in place, like sales will follow for sure. Yeah, exactly. Which is super exciting. Okay, so if you want this free resource, you can go to harmanbrothers.com slash video strategy. And it's free. It is all yours. And I hope that you go watch it. I mean, you can maybe watch it on 1.2 or 1.3 speed and get through it and implement it. And we would love to hear, you know, what you're doing with it. We'd love to see some results from it. And what if, Shane, what if they watch this training and they want some help? What do they do? Yeah, if you guys have any questions or get stuck on a part or just need some advice on some of this stuff, you know, you can shoot us an email at business at harmbrothers.com. We have a real live person who will actually read your email and respond to you. And so, yeah, I mean, we're here to help. We're here to, I mean, this is what we do every day is help people fix their marketing funnels and really create content that addresses the needs that they have. So we'd be happy to help out in any way we can. So shoot us an email. Okay, cool. Well, thanks, guys. Thanks for joining us. And thank you, Shane. I appreciate it. No, thank you, Britt. This has been great. Really appreciate it. Cool. Talk to you later. If this episode gave you any good ideas, then give us a follow. That way we know you're interested and we'll be able to create more episodes you'll love.